Yeah, folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Victoria 3. Originally, I thought we were going to wait until 1.7 and the Sphere of Influence patch drop before we played again, but that's been pushed back, which means I think I've got enough time for a playthrough on 1.6, which I'm excited about because I've been playing on my own. I think it's a great patch. Also, I've been learning more things, both through our Let's Plays, but also in, in private uh, games that I'm really hyped to get into. One of the things I do want to note, I have decided to go with the directly control investment pool in the game rules over here. Um, I like the idea of the, you know, capitalists and aristocrats building building their own thing. I think it's kind of cool and it feels it feels realistic, but we've had some issues with them maybe overbuilding the wrong thing with the wrong priority. And so um, I've decided to go to directly controlled investment pool. Plus, it means there's more game for us. We did. We get to game more right rather than being sort of a spectator. So um, I've been having a lot of fun with that option in my personal games. And we're going to be playing as Japan. Japan was actually the very first country that I played in Victoria 2. It's how I learned to play Victoria 2 by playing Japan. And it's, I think, quite a shame that we haven't played it yet. Also keeps showing up on people's lists of like really fun nations to play in Vicky 3. Russia and Prussia also make um, frequent uh, appearances in there. So we might have to look at those at some point. But yeah, we'll start with the Japanese Shogunate. Now, we are in a very interesting situation here in that unlike the vast majority of nations in the game, we do start off with isolationism. We literally cannot do any trade routes. We have to build everything in-house, and there's no desire to change over here, mostly because the Shogunate faction is incredibly powerful. This is our landowners here in Japan. They're incredibly powerful, and they are opposed to us changing away from isolationism. So it's gonna be a fight to deal with them at some point. We are gonna be actively looking at ways that we can weaken them, and we may even consider seeing if we can trigger a revolution against them. So that'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. For now though, we have to, yeah, we have to bootstrap our industry. If we take a look uh, at the urban side, you can see we have very little industry happening. A little bit of textiles, a little bit of furniture, a little bit of glassworks, and some paper mills. That is it. Um, rurally, we have no mines at the start. We have 15 logging camps, which is gonna be helpful, but that's about it. Um, we also, if we take a look at our screen here, government facilities, we can see we have a horrific taxation capacity problem, which actually makes me think I'm going to do something what I think is kind of insane. Normally with the research, and you can see we're actually quite behind on research as well. We don't even have cotton gin, for example, no lathe or anything like that. Uh, is a lathe? Do I go lathe? I don't know. A lot of times I like to pick up intensive agricultural early on because um, it seems like a freebie. You get the soil and rich farming, which boosts all your farms. Uh, they require some fertilizer, but you can get some of it from your livestock ranches with increased wool gathering. You can usually slap down a fertilizer plant or two. And while you're doing the transition, you can import your fertilizer. And of course, if you build the fertilizer plant, you can import your sulfur because you don't need a sulfur mine until then. We're in a much more awkward situation where everything has to be bootstrapped internally, which is gonna be tricky. That combined with our serious lack of taxation support, part of me actually wonders if the right thing to do is weirdly to rush the central archives so we can get standard filing system because it dramatically increases our taxation capacity. I think it gives us an extra 50%. I think normally you have 10 taxation per government office and this brings it to 15. I might be wrong about those numbers, but um, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Although it does also consume a lot more paper. We do have a paper industry, not that much of it, but yeah, we are, if we look over here, our unrealized tax is at 60K and that's gonna get worse very quickly. I was poking around a little bit and trying to get a vibe. I don't know what the right flow is. One thing with the central archives, it would be 11 years to research, but I mean, we can, you know, hard focus it. Um, yeah, empiricism for some school stuff might be nice. We could go cotton gin. We do have some cotton plantations and that would lead us to a lathe. Unlocking the dye workshop. We even had local uh, dye production. Unlocks lathes, which will require tools, but does give us much more efficient uh, furniture production um, per building, which is good. Furniture workshops tend to be pretty decent money makers early on. There are also needs for your people. So the standard living tends to be impacted by the lathe. So maybe in my test runs, I did go with intensive agriculture first. I also went with central archives first. And they both gave you wildly different benefits that were nice to have. Maybe not taking it as a bad idea, but I'm actually wondering if we go cotton gin lathe. Atmospheric engine to support our mines early. I don't know, maybe. And I mean, obviously we're gonna need railways. because It's incredibly desirable. 
But yeah, the opening tech order here is a giant question mark in my head. A giant question mark. The advantage of going Cotton Gin and Lathe is they are fairly cheap to research because they're tier one techs, right? Three years a piece. Intensive agriculture takes six years. And again, Central Archives does take 11. Central Archives is going to have to be supported by more of a paper industry, which is a whole other kettle of fish to deal with. Um, but again, brings up our taxation capacity. And it sucks to like, we have so many taxes not being actually collected because we're going to have a budget problem nonstop. So I don't know where to start. One of the things I got to say I'm considering is just disbanding a lot of the army because we are paying uh, 7K military wages over here and we could free that up. We're not going to go to war with anyone early on. Um, maybe because we are doing some frontier colonization, so there could be a little bit of a rebellion there, but that's about it. I actually kind of like this idea. Obviously, it means we're going to have to rebuild the barracks. On the other hand, one of the things we might end up doing in this game is ending up with a rebellion, uh, a, a revolution by the Shogunat, right? The, the aristocratic revolt, in which case we're going to want all our barracks to be concentrated in our capital. Now, as far as I can tell, when we disband this, we don't get to choose where they come from. Oh, disband the least experienced Japanese Hokkaido. Tohoku, which is over here. Okay, that's fine. Because what I don't want is them to be disbanding our barracks from Kensei, which I'm assuming has barracks. Yeah, it does, 20. Okay, I think this is fine. I'm just doing this one at a time. Okay, now we'd be disbanding from Kanto. I wonder if there's a way to get these guys to be the most experienced and force that issue. Versus the others. Still, in theory, this has brought down our military wages and it has. I'm actually thinking it's probably fine for us to go and tank this completely. Oh, wait, hold on. We don't have to do this right now. We actually are sitting on a ton of money. And um, in my, my starts here, Japan actually can't spend this enough. We need to get some more construction sectors up ASAP. So we're gonna do that. Now, we can't really go to iron frame building right away because we literally have no iron mines and we don't have any tooling workshops. Um, no, I don't think we have any tooling workshops. Now, we can do tooling workshops with just wooden tools. So we can do that, but we still don't have the iron mines. Um, so, and we are gonna need tooling workshops with just tools because if we build iron mines, iron mines require tools. So we kind of have to bootstrap that, but we're gonna clearly have to stay on wooden buildings for a little bit, which takes, yeah, just the fabric or what's this resource called? Um, is it not tool tipping me this? Okay, but yeah, the, the fabric, which we're getting from right now, probably mostly our cattle or cotton. I suppose if we got ca cotton plantations, we probably do. We're getting some of that. Um, I do uh, definitely want to go up in terms of production here. We are, I can tell you this, we're going to be building a fair amount in Tohoku. Tohoku also has the advantage of having both the, um, the logging camps and the iron mines. It might be our only province with both. Well, that's not true. Kanto here does. And it's got a lot of people. It has more people. Kanto might be a better pick. You got a bay, point oh, throughputs. Okay, Kanto plants of infrastructure bonus, which is good because one of the things we're gonna be struggling with is infrastructure. So this has a limit of 80 versus 65. You can see this taxation capacity is insane, is insane. Okay, I propose we go and develop a big construction sector in Kanto here. One of the things in my past games, I wasn't using the, well, here it's upkeep, but really it's like this earnings thing. I wasn't really using this actively because at release of Victoria 3, this couldn't be trusted. That appears to have been long since fixed, and I really should rely on this a little bit more actively to look at things. Um, I might not worry about it so much for the upkeep side currently with construction, because that's going to change as we build lumber mills in Kanto and then later on also iron mines and tooling workshops, the price is constantly gonna fluctuate over here. The thing I'm most interested in is maybe spare infrastructure as well as available job seekers. So Kanto seems like a good pick for this. And I'm gonna want, I don't know, maybe five more? Something like that. Now I might wanna be kind of careful about exactly how much I queue. Uh, one of the things that might be nice 
Buildings, as far as I can tell, can take about 25 construction points per to build. Should we target early on about 50, which is the perfect amount to build two buildings at a time? I'm worried about overbuilding the construction sector and not being able to feed enough raw resource into it. I mean, the start of our game is all going to be construction sectors, lumber mills, into construction sectors, into iron mines and tooling workshops, into construction sectors, and, and bootstrapping that sort of thing. But yeah, if we can eyeball around that. So if we go to iron frame buildings, these generate 10 construction per. So five of them total would give us 50 construction, which is enough for two build queues simultaneously at max rate. Is that all we want? I kind of feel like we're probably going to want to go up to 10. We could have the option of building up to four things simultaneously then. We might not always use the full construction sector. Well, as long as we weave in enough farming. So right now we've got traditionalism as our economic system. Uh, we don't get a lot of investment pool contributions, which really sucks. And it can only apply to agricultural plantation and ranches. So only, only farming type stuff. No mines, no industry or anything. So there's not that many options for it, but we don't have that much. But we will try to make use of this as much as possible. Okay, well, we're going to start with this. We'll build these five. We'll see where we're at over there. Um, well, the lathe has to spread to us for us to work on mechanical tools. I mean, we're going to get some tech spread, not very much because we're super isolationist. And yeah, we have no universities. We actually have a pretty good literacy rate uh, to start off with. The explanation for it is this Terracoya system, uh, which has a penalty to research speed, increases education access. And it's a, yeah, so this series of, um, I think they describe it. It means, oh, temple schools, temple schools over here, but they're decentralized. We get rid of it when we get our education level up to three, which can't start at all until we get um, over in society. I think we need empiricism to unlock schools well that's public schools i guess other schools are already available they're just not being supported yeah okay we are going to start spending some authority well first of all we're constructing in canto so the first thing i want to do in canto is i want to do rate road maintenance so we get a 10 percent booster construction efficiency that i like the idea of i cannot suppress the shogunate because it's in power but what we can do is we can uh, bolster other groups i'm going to try to bring the industrialist in the trade unions as well they're going to support a law they support interventionism as well as agrarianism we really want to see about moving those forward now both of those are marginalized which isn't great Intelligentsia, do you support? You probably don't give a crap, do you? Hang on, if we go and look at our laws, like if I want to get to interventionism, okay, it's just industrialists and trade unions. Agrarianism, the rural folk. I think I'm going to push the rural folk. I actually think, um, normally I don't really like them, but I think they're going to have a certain amount of conflict with the landowners. And so I think they're actually a good candidate for us to bolster to try to counter that, because they're going to push for certain laws that might be very helpful. Also just noticed, is there professional army support at 61%? Everybody supports this, including the Shogunate. Oh, okay. I don't know if that helps us short term. We want frontier colonization going on. Dedicated police force actually would be very good. Local police force gives a 10% boost to shogunates. Dedicated police force does away with that. So the shogunate won't like it. But let's try to push that right away. 14% isn't fantastic. But it would be really good if we can push some things. Now, we're not currently... I know, I own pause for two whole seconds. We're not currently doing any consumption taxes. Our tax levels are midline. We might max this out. We're going to keep an eye on things. Right now, wood's quite expensive, which makes sense, especially with our construction industry going on. Now, oh, I'm going to pause again and have a complaint. As far as I know, this is new in 1.6. I might be imagining things, but I think this is new in 1.6. I am sure, I'm 100% confident that mousing over here used to give us our construction costs. Now, I can still expand this and look at the construction cost in a specific state. But I'm pretty sure that prior to 1.6, we could mouse over here and it would show us the construction costs as a range. Like, the price of wood is ranging from like 20 to 25 in all of our states with construction things. And that's no longer there. I used to really like this as a quick glance to get an idea 
about what raw materials to um, focus on to support our construction industry. Now, I can still kind of get that here, looking at the market and seeing the top three expensive things here, but a lot of times the top three expensive things won't include construction material, and a lot of times I do want to focus on getting the construction material under control. Now, obviously in this case, the wood is very expensive in our market, only plus 13% over the base price though, which isn't too shabby. So I think we don't have to worry about building the logging yet, although I probably will go and make sure to queue up at least one logging camp in Kanto. And already we got a failure bringing it down to 3%. Well, if it goes down to zero, it'll get a setback and do a rewrite. So we'll see how that goes. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't pass, but it sure would be handy if we could do that, wouldn't it? Man, it'd be great to set up some trade routes. Oh, look, we got a, clippers are expensive. I'll import some, right, we can't because we're freaking isolationists. Although I think I remember seeing our fishing wharves, some of them are set to trawlers, which use clippers. So let's just go to simple fishing. That'll free up a little bit of clipper. Wow, the price is still high, but there you are. Public debate. Oh, it failed again. All right. It's going to stall out completely. Wonderful. Okay, so failure. We'll sponsor a rewrite. So that's going to reset this to only 12%, but so be it. Um, Who supports this again? Samurai, Intelligentsia. Because I still have some authority. Should I bolster the Samurai? The Petit here are marginalized. Although, the thing is, bolstering more things will take away strength from the Shogunate. So we're going to bolster a lot of things here. I think that's still fine. Okay, construction is done. We're doing the logging camp now. I mean, I'm assuming the wood is continuing to get expensive. Um, if we go and take a look at our logging camp and sort by earnings, let's say it should be the highest in Kanto, and that is indeed the case. We don't get the shortage indicated here, right? If we look here, we can see, yeah, 400 short. Each one of these are generating... I'm sorry, you don't tell me how much you're adding here? That's strange. Oh, doesn't tell me there. It would tell me here, 30. So if I keep another five, we're still gonna have a deficit. Not an actual shortage, but still a deficit. So yeah, let's build a ton over there. I think. Each one of these construction sectors is consuming how much wood? 25. Or sorry, 75 wood per. No, hold on. I think this is the total. I guess we can see if I go here. No, it is 75 wood per. Oh my god, okay. So yeah, we do need a lot of lumbering to support that. So we're going to keep focusing on Kanto over here. Lost setback, of course. Well, we are at consideration at least. But still. United States improving relations. Oh, yeah, I haven't looked at our diplomatic situation. We'll declare interest, first of all, here. Um, hmm. Here, maybe we can get some uh, gunship diplomacy going on. Get our borders open up, which I wouldn't complain about. Oh, and I guess we've reached enough. I can start a colony up here. Good. Perfect. You can't right at the start of the game start a colony on the second island, but you want to keep an eye on that. And we got there. Oh, right thing I want to do over here, diplomatic options, uh, improve relations, Russia, United States. I mean, China, maybe. Thing is, if we want Korea at some point, Korea is a tributary of China. So we'll see how that shakes itself out. Okay, money's still positive, although it's not overflowing, which is, you know, good and bad. Wood's still expensive and will continue to be so. Now, our investment pool is starting to add up here. I think, hmm, I guess it makes sense to bring the price of wood down first to make our construction cheaper so that when we start to build things, even if it's out of the investment pool and is quote unquote free, we'll get more bang for our buck out of this because the price of wood will continue to be reasonable. Okay, sort by earnings, it's still quite high in Kanto. Have you hired? You have fully hired, okay. Well, then that's fine. I think we're going to smack down. We're going to max out in Kanto. So it doesn't have a huge amount of lumber support, but it's got some. And then I realize that this isn't going to be like um, economy of scale, but I'll throw in a couple of randoms over here because I think I don't even know. Do does it, your population just consume a little bit of wood directly? Some do. Oh, no. Even the peasants over here. Yeah. So there's a little bit 
So keeping the price of wood down a little bit is good. They don't consume a lot, so it's not going to have a huge impact on their um, standard living. Yeah, at some point we'll throw in some consumption taxes. In fact, I could probably start doing that now. Throw a consumption tax on liquor, which again impacts standard living a little bit, but we're going to keep our money strong here. 25%. Backroom dealings exposed. Reduce success chance or reduce success chance. We'll take the less reduced. That brings our bureaucracy down a little bit. That's unfortunate. Oh, we got something unpinned. Oh, the whaling industry. I don't know if I'm going to do this. Um, so we need a level three whaling station. That part of it is fine, right? Whaling station. We've got a level two over here, but it also needs an admiral and we literally don't have a Navy. So we'd have to build ourselves a military shipyard and do that. I mean, we're probably going to want a Navy if we're going to want to do aggro things at some point since we live on an island, but I'm not sure it's worth doing right now. You have a lot of pressure for this professional army, which again, I'm not opposed to. And currently we're getting radicals because of this movement. I mean, I can't start it now because we're doing this, but when this fails, I'm not going to say if this fails. I suspect it's going to be when. Yeah. Here, we'll take the uh, minus 15. Yeah, well, I mean, I can just stop because it's going to it's going to fail and we're, it's going to give us a setback and then it'll be done. So we got to cancel that. No one hates this. All right. Professional army. Oh, speaking of, though, is there any chance if I were to disband stuff over here? That nah, would be from Kanto. Our capital, I want to mostly leave things there. Cotton gin, cotton plantation throughput. I haven't actually checked my building modes for everything, but I'm not sure what we can change. Actually, fig orchards, that'll be a moneymaker. Maybe, maybe only switch some. Oh, it's mostly, okay. That's fine. We're going to set everything there. We can't do the tools yet. We don't have a tool industry. I can't do butchering tools. We don't have a tool industry. Um, I can't do sawmills. Presumably we need some hardwood. Uh, that's not one that's set on that mode. We literally only have one place set on that mode. This wood's expensive, but we're clearly consuming some... Yeah, we can complete some hardwood, and that's literally the only place making it, so we don't want to turn that off. Can we do Market Square? We need glass. Which we don't have. Uh, hold on, that's not true. Don't we have a glass industry? We do. Do we not have enough of one? Let me check my mar full market here. Sort by name, glass. So we have 22 access. Okay, which is not very much at all. If I want to flip you here, this would consume oh, just three more. If I turned everyone into this and more. Oh, we can totally support that. Okay. Uh, tech. Not bad. We want the lathe, which is spreading to us, but we're going to accelerate that. I think that's worthwhile. Work on a professional army. Logging camp still being made. Wood costs are still super high. Um, well, how super high? 22%. Yeah, let's bring it down a little bit more. I really want to start spending out of this investment pool. On the other hand, we're still making positive income, which actually makes me think we can go and boost our construction industry. I think there's still going to be a lot of construction going on in Kanto. I'm going to build three more construction industry there. Although, ooh, it can't, it can't produce any more wood. Logging camps. Kansei can get it. Do you have iron, though? No. And no. Ah, uh, Shikoku. You don't have a ton of job seekers. Again, I'm just worried about here. You do have some infrastructure. Okay, we're going to assume some in this area. Let's build you a construction sector and then two logging camps and then a construction sector and two logging camps and a construction sector and two logging camps. I realize that's not actually supplying. It's not the right ratio, but it's going to be fine. Yeah, I kind of want enough construction that we're not running a surplus while I'm spending government money on this, especially with the fact that we really we haven't even started taxing or anything yet. Like we can clearly do more. 
you would like me to pass professional army within the next five years. Well, I've got great news for you guys. We are now, holy cow, 82% support over here. Seems great. Colonization of Hokkaido is done, and then we're working over there. Groovy. Yeah, logging is still expensive, but not so expensive. It's our most expensive good in the market, but it's only 19% over the base price. Actually, wait, is this sorted by shortage? Maybe it's sorted by, I mean, I, I'm guessing it's sorted by, oh yeah, we can't see the, uh, the, the trade, like the trade routes, like with import and export potential, but yeah, maybe it's that, maybe it's like deficit. Yeah, maybe it's deficit rather than price. I assume price, but I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, but not exactly. Fruit's still quite expensive, despite the fact that all of my, all my rice farms were set to fruit production. And building more might not make any sense because the price of rice isn't that high. Huh. We can take a look, and we can build wheat farms somewhere, but yeah, the earnings are really low. Rice farms would be pro pretty profitable, but mostly just because of the fruit. I guess if we set up food industries, that'll start consuming grain and sugar. That might be the balancing factor. Oh, I went down to speed one. Sorry about that. Okay, we might put a cut in here. Bootstrap! Oh, you're isolated over there. Um, you do have a land connection. Seems, strikes me a little odd. Tell you what, though, I'm going to alt click one port, put it at the top of the list. We got a port over here. I mean, I was going to say, it's fine. We're going to want more convoys. What the hell are we going to use convoys for right now? But we can alleviate the um, the isolation. Oh, look, it's because of the way that it's expanding. How strange. You know what? That's going to fix itself soon. As soon as this is colonized here. How bizarre. Why would they start in the middle? Yeah, as soon as that's colonized, it won't be isolated. So it's going to be A-OK. -okay. Building industry, Shogunat, yes. This is going to take a while to fix. Professional army is pushing. We're building this. Currently, our balance is still fine. I think we've lost some... Yeah, standard living has gone down a little bit. GDP, it is eighth overall in the world, but it's not climbing right now, which doesn't feel good. And of course, we still have tons of unrealized taxes, which is only going to get worse as we build more industry that is then not getting taxed. So we're going to have to sneak into the government offices, but when do you do that? And then when do we get our universities up? When we're just trying to get the basics of an industry going? I don't know. I don't know what the build order priority is here. I feel like so far, this is the right way to go. And yeah, the next thing will be introduce some tooling workshops, which are just going to use wood. Um, maybe very quickly then follow up with iron mines, which will consume tools. Then we can upgrade the tooling workshops to... Um, use iron tools. So then the iron mines and the tooling workshops will sort of feed into each other. We can activate tool modes on more of our industry, especially when we finish our lathe uh, research and, you know, kind of stabilize on that and then make the switch over to iron frame buildings. Unless we want to iron frame buildings a little sooner because this is actually going to free up tons of wood. Like you can see the wood price is just going to drop like a freaking stone here. Now that's going to be offset by the tooling industries will still consume some wood, even when it go to iron, right? I don't think I'm wrong about that. Uh, what's the quickest way? Can we see that without a building in place? If I go to industry, tooling workshop, and just click here. Yeah, wrought iron tools. Oh, actually uses the same amount of wood. They both use 30 per industry. It's just the wrought iron tools also uses 20 iron and doubles their output. Okay. So yeah, what we can do is we can build up tool industries. So we're going to have to still run with a wood deficit because at some point when we make this change. Actually, no, we could solve the wood, the wood deficit, change that. Wood becomes very cheap, but then we build more tooling workshops. I don't know. I don't know what the order of our bootstrapping will be, but we're going to try. I mean, we're, we're just juggling eggs. What's going on here and hoping not to drop any and crashing our economy, which is currently flatlined. <laughs> Folks, I hope you are as excited for this series as I am. Uh, as always, YouTube uh, algorithm really eats those comments and likes. If you can drop them, it makes a big difference. And of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel so you don't miss an episode. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.